Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll continue with episode 14 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering scope. So in order to represent a local scope, what we can do is simply type in open and closed curly braces. And in its simplest form, this is in fact a scope. So we can say that this represents the local scope of some function or statement. And you might look up and see that the main function actually has a scope itself. So anything between these curly braces is going to be in the same scope. Anything between these curly braces is going to be in the same scope. And we'll call these local scopes. Now what happens if you have something out of these curly braces completely? Let's say above main here where there's no curly braces. This is actually called the global scope. So if you ever hear someone referring to the global scope, this means out of all the parentheses, all the functions, which we'll learn about soon, really outside of anything, so that anything and everything in your program has access to anything that's defined up here in global scope. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So now that we know that there's a local scope and a global scope, let's spend a moment and try representing what these actually mean. We can do that by defining various variables. So let's define our first one right here. Let's define an integer called num for number and we'll set it equal to something. How about one? So this variable num, which is of an integer type, is in the scope of the main function since it belongs in between these curly braces. And all that means is that anything inside these curly braces will know what num actually means. Otherwise, if you tried using num somewhere outside of these curly braces, the program would have no clue what number is or means. So to give an example, let's put C out here and then print out num and see if we get one printed out to us. I'll also put a end line here just to make things a little cleaner. Now I'll compile the program and then I'll run it. We see that we got a one out in the console. Therefore, num can be read between these other curly braces, which is great. Now let's do a different example. What if we moved C out out here and then we replaced C out by defining the integer inside of this scope? What do you think would happen this time? And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. Well, now we've changed the scope of where num is located. So it doesn't just have to be an integer here. It can be a character, Boolean, or whatever other data type you can think of. So let's give this another shot here. I'll compile the program. And now we get an error when we try to compile. It says error, num was not declared in this keyword here, scope. It made a suggestion, but that's not what we wanted. The program did not know what num was, and that's because it was outside of the scope of where it was located. Meaning this definition of num only exists between these curly braces and nowhere else in the program. So these other sets of curly braces, which let's say represent local scope number one, and the second set of curly braces would represent local scope number two. Since local scope number two is inside of local scope number one, you can't get information out of local scope two into local scope one. Therefore, the compiler doesn't understand where number is located because this scope is one level above this one. Let's do something we're all more familiar with. Let's add an if statement here. So we do if some condition is true, then we would execute these statements in between the curly braces for an if statement as we've learned in the past. Well, now you realize that there are curly braces here as well. And this just represents another scope and it's the scope of the if statement. So the scope of the if statement understands that there is a number defined as an integer and equal to one. But as soon as we exit out of this if statement and the scope of the if statement, Nothing else understands what number is equal to or what data type it is. So I'll just show you real quick. Again, we'll expect an error. And sure enough, we got that number was not declared in this scope. Back to the program. Now we understand that there are different scopes of a program and different levels of scope available to us. So now that we've talked a little bit about the local scope and one nice thing about scope is it can let you reuse variable names as well as just make temporary variables only located in specific functions. One thing that's great about using scope is that you can use temporary variables that can be destroyed right after you leave the scope. 
So number could exist for a little bit and as soon as it's outside of the scope, it's gone. We can also reuse names like this. So if we wanted to use another integer called num, let's set this one equal to two. This is completely valid because it exists in a different scope than num equal to one. Let's give this a shot and everything compiled fine. We'll rerun the program. And now we see we have two. Why did this work? Because num was defined as an integer and set equal to a two inside of this scope. We can even see Visual Studio Code trying to highlight these two parentheses for us to let us know what the scope actually is. And these two do not interfere with each other. Now let's actually make an interference. So what if we wanted to define an integer called num equal to three, which was available throughout our entire program? That means it's available in any scope. Well, that's called global scope and we're globally defining a variable here called num. A global scope variable should only be defined in very special cases and we'll talk about those in the future. But for now, just understand that you can define a variable globally. So what's going to happen here? Let's run this real quick. So I'm gonna compile things and then run scope. So we got two. That's because the local scope actually took precedence over the global scope whenever spitting out the number. So let's remove the local definition and try once more. This time when I ran the program, we got three. That's because num is defined globally as three. We can also print it out in here. Let's say it wasn't defined and we'll move this up. When we run this time, we should expect three again and we got it. So those are the two main types of scope, a local scope and a global scope, but you can have multiple local scopes inside of your program. As you can tell, the main scope versus the if statement scope, those are two different scopes, of course. One other thing and a little bonus that I'll mention to you is what if you defined a global scope and a local scope num, but you wanted to print out the global one instead of what we saw earlier where it printed out our local one. Well, if you want that, there is a way to do it. And all you have to type in front of the num is two colons. This will specify that you want to use the global num instead of the local num. So let's give this a shot, see if we get three this time instead of two. Then we'll remove the colons and check what we get for a second time. I'll compile things, run it, and now we got three, which is in the global scope. If I get rid of these colons, save the program, compile, run it, now I get two. So that's a little bonus, just in case you ever want to override something that is in the local scope and is defined as a local scope variable, but you also have a global scope one and you wanna use that one instead. Some people also refer to these scopes as block scope versus global scope. So if you ever hear that, you don't get confused, but those are the basics for scope in C++. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.